everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown and the Madeline McCann Circus is on the road again. Oh, such a headache. I, I swear, such a headache. Um, it's the German police. They're now down in the Algarve and they're searching a place. It says right here, they're searching the man-made dam near Silves in Portugal. Um, it's the first major operation of its kind since the dig in Prior de Luz in 2014. It's a reservoir, this one over here, and it's been searched before, twice before. Um, never anything found there. But now the German police have said, oh, you know, their little suspect, Christian Bruckner, um, who they have no evidence on. <laughs> that used to be a favorite little place of his. Of course, we're not telling, you know, they're not telling us what kind of favorite place. I mean, how they say it's his, it's, his, it's like a special place. Like, what are they implying? A special place to rape and kill children? A special place to, like, take a picnic? Take a date? Fish? I mean, what is that? But, of course, we're not going to find that out. But they're going to go there and get 80% of the search is supposed to be on land and 20% in the water. Gosh knows what, you know, they're trying to find, obviously, the remains of Madeleine McCann. Uh, now, let's assume they do find the remains of Madeleine McCann in that reservoir. And so what? How does that link the remains of Maddie to Christian Bruckner? Unless he's unless he put her in like a bag and the bag on the outside is like a laundry bag and it says Christian Bruckner on the outside of the laundry bag. Oh, well, then, OK, then probably it, it was Christian Bruckner. But what happens if it's just a body? Um, now, if the body were found with, in a sports bag, as seemed to have gone missing out of the, the McCann's vacation flat in Prior de Luge, well, then you might say, all righty then, we're not going we're gonna to get rid of that abduction theory. Um, and we're going to say, hey, it probably was the McCann's involvement in what happened to Maddie. Um, so I guess, do I object to them doing the search? And no, I don't. Um, it's annoying in the sense that it just happens every so often. They dig up this land, they dig up that land, but it, it's it's sometimes it's just the way they do it and, and the amount of money being spent that is, is concerning. Um, but all right, fine. If you find Maddie's uh, remains, A, it will close the issue of that she's still alive out there somewhere, which is ridiculous because one of two things happened in this case. One is that Something happened to Maddie while her parents were over having drinks with friends and uh, she died by some circumstance in the, in the flat and her parents discovered her in that situation and removed her body and covered up what happened. And you will find that theory in my book, Profile the Disappearance of Madeline McCann, which you cannot get on Amazon because uh, the McCann's Carter rucked me, sent the lawyers after after. Amazon to have the book removed and they succeeded because Amazon didn't want to deal with them <laughs> deal with spending a lot of money on lawyers. So you can find the book, however, at Barnes and Noble online. You can find the book at uh, uh, Smashwords and Apple, all kinds of other places, just not there. So I'll put one link below. So one theory is the McCann's had to find a place for her body. And over the years, there's been a lot of theories on that. And I'll get to mine at the end of this. Um, but there have been a lot of theories, uh, reservoirs, um, just different, different water has been very popular as a theory as to where uh, Madeline's body might, might have been placed. So if the McCann's were involved, could this be a choice of this? Absolutely. It's about 30 miles, I guess, from Prado Deluge. Could, could Maddie's body be there because the McCann's were involved and had to dispose of her body? Yes. However, let's be fair. It could what well, let's say it was Christian Bruckner, although there's no evidence linking him to the crime or to any other abductor. Um, one of the problems with this crime is that originally they said Christian Bruckner, they tried to say that he abducted Maddie and took her back to Germany. So why they're over here, I don't know. But in my opinion, if she were actually abducted, then it would be by a child sex predator, and she would probably be she probably would be dead within a few hours. Like mostly happens with young children who are abducted. Now, mind you, teenagers who are abducted, mm, sometimes those guys will keep the child around in, in, in a barn or in the basement or in some makeshift whatever. 
and, and keep that child prisoner because the child is a teenager. The child can do things for them and the child can uh, develop a dependency on them and be maybe even pleasant, you see. Um, but Maddie was way too young. She's a toddler and toddlers are hard enough for parents to deal with because they cry and they cry and they whine and they have all kinds of other little issues. If parents have a hard time dealing with them, I'm gonna guarantee you, uh, child sex predators who kidnapped them want to do what they want to do and they want to get rid of them. So Maddie would have been dead very quickly. So in that case, if it were any abductor, could they have killed her, taken her to the, this location and dumped her? Yes. Could it have been Christian Bruckner? It could be him as well as it could be anybody, but you have to have proof. So let's say they do find the remains of Maddie at this location. Unless she is buried in something that will link her to her, to whoever put her there. All it's going to prove is that Maddie is dead. That's it. It will not prove who did it, uh, who was involved. It will not prove that. Um, so that's a problem. Uh, I, I, I say if that were true and they found her there, yes, that would end the issue over whether she was dead or alive. Uh, but then just the... The case would have to go on us to find out and to prove who who helped her get into this condition. All right. Um, so, again, they want to search here. Bully for them. Let them go do it. I just don't know that they're going to come up with anything, but fine. However, the, the German police, this constant claim that Christian Bruckner is involved without a shred of evidence is concerning. I don't know what's up with that prosecutor, but he has he's, he's told a bunch of nonsense for a very long time. I don't know if he just in his heart thinks it's Christian Bruckner because he don't like the guy and the guy's creepy. Uh, you know, he, he is what he is. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a he is a sex predator. It's not like that's true. Um, but there, that doesn't mean he had anything to do with Madeleine McCann. And just because he lives nearby at doesn't mean he did it. Uh, and I don't object to the concept if Maddie were truly being, have been abducted, that he could be the one who did it. Eh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily object to that. Um, but you have to have proof. And in my opinion, there has been no proof of an abduction. That's one of the things that is so frustrating. Uh, Gonzalo Amaral, when he had the case, he did not believe that Madeline was abducted. And he wrote the book, Truth of a Lie, which McCann's got pulled off the market, which is back. And I think he's written the second one now. So, hey, he can still have his theory out there and I can still have mine as Jerry McCann says, we are allowed to purport our theories as long as we don't say for absolute that they did it. All right. So there's, in my opinion, there just simply ha was not any evidence of an abduction. Um, and the McCann's behavior also supported my view that Madeline was not abducted. All right. So where do I think Madeline is? All right, I wrote I wrote a, a blog a long time ago because I did go to Pri I did go to Prior de Luge. I met with Gonzalo. Um, we were actually going to write a book together, and then my agent tried to find a publisher in the U.S. and they wouldn't touch it because everybody knows the McCanns like to sue. So <laughs> so the publisher's like, eh, nope. But I'm glad Gonzalo was, has managed to find a publisher again in, in Portugal. Good for him. Um, so I did go to Prior de Luge and in, in my looking around, my th thinking was people had asked, where do you think if the McCanns were involved, if they were, and I say again, if, because as a profiler, I do an analysis based on evidence. It doesn't mean I am correct. All right. Uh, when should profiling really be used? It should be used during the police investigation because it helps the police focus on, on the best leads. So I might look at this and say, look, I'm having trouble with this. Why don't you look over here? Because this, to me, when I look at this case, I'm not seeing an abduction. I think you need to do more interviewing other parents. I think you need to look at where, where they went. I think you need to check this, this, and that. That's what I would say. But it doesn't mean I'm right. This is Detectives have the same thing going on. Detectives are profilers in their own right. They're doing the same thing because they have to analyze the evidence and determine the avenues of investigation. And as new information comes on, comes in, they may change their focus. They may change their avenues of investigation. They may change their whole theory. That's what you do during a police investigation. And that's when profiling should be used uh, in, in, in the best way. Um, so based on what I have learned from all the police reports, 
and the book that Kate wrote, I still lean toward the theory that she was, Madeline was not abducted. So I went to Pride Illusion and uh, I was looking around where, if this were true, that she was not abducted and the parents had, there was an accidental death that they tried to cover up to save the rest of their family and their careers and all of that. And they had to put her body someplace. Where would they choose? I never thought water was the thing. I, I thought of them, they're, they're Catholic. I thought they would prefer a burial. It's like this was an accidental death. We, we are going to give a proper burial to our daughter. And I also think that Jerry would have done this alone without Kate's help if this was what happened, because I believe that he would take it upon himself to make sure things went well. I looked around and a lot of people, a lot of different theories, but this was mine. OK, I'll just read from here. Before coming to Portugal, I entertained a number of possibilities. The Huelva baths in Spain where the McCanns were went just as the cadaver dogs are arriving, uh, removal back to the UK, which can oddly could be done, but it'd be pretty unique. But it, it, they have had incidents where people actually were able to bring bodies back to a place you wouldn't think they would, that could happen, but it could. Not likely, but could. Um, and uh, in incineration, some people thought of incineration. They all had interesting possibilities, but I thought many of them were hard to accomplish. The one thing, I found was that Jerry did drive around, all right, a lot. And there was a place that his phone was pinging that was to the west of Prior de Luge. Um, and it pinged repeatedly to the west of Prior de Luge, uh, along the road to Budens. It was on EN125. Um, I found it interesting that the day he was to leave for Quelva, he was not feeling well, having a bit of an upset stomach. This led me to theorize he could have used that day to move the body or to recover from moving it the day before. I decided when I got to Prior Deluge, I would take a trip down that road to the west and see whether there's any suitable place for a body to be, to be buried, essentially. And I looked at a bunch of different places. There was a fort, there were some graveyards, but the place that I found, which was very close to Prior Deluge, was this place called, um, it was called Mont. Oh, let me, let me pronounce it as correctly as I can. Um, it is called Mont, Monte do Jose Mestre. And I apologize to all the people of Portugal. <laughs> uh, Monte do Jose Mestre. What it is, is it is a huge desolate area uh, that covers many square meters and is filled with a considerable network of dirt roads. Looking down uh, on the area from atop the highest hill, there's a row of windmills. Small trees and bushes are scattered throughout, and the dirt is not impossible to dig in. Uh, Jerry had just returned from England, and I wouldn't be surprised if he, uh, he could have bought a shovel bag or something that would help him out in that, in that fact. And once he's done that, uh, he could have thrown away the shovel in a dumpster. Um, but this area, let me show you the area of Ho this, this incredible area that is just west of Pride de Luge. And this, you can see it's a dirt road going down there, and you can see um, this is the side of the car. It's got those little bushes. Here's another bunch of pictures from it. There's no houses up there. It's just a whole network of little ro dirt roads and bushes. Okay. Um, so I looked at that and I thought, this is a place that if you're driving down to a Budins and you see that road going up there, just like I did in a desolate little area, you pull over and go up there and you say, this would be a good location. It'd be easy to return to. And this would be a good location in my opinion. Now, do I ever think they're going to dig there? Well, no, nobody's ever taken me up on the concept that Maddie's body could be there. But what I would, I always wonder whether someday they're going to build houses or something in that area and dig up the place and suddenly they would discover uh, Madeline McCann's body. Now, am I saying her body is in that area, um, uh, Monte de Jose Mestre? Am I saying it's there? No, I'm not. But when people asked me of a place I thought was the most logical, that was the one I think is most logical because of its very close location to Prior de Luge, because I found it very easily because Jerry's phone pinged on that road, um, path, going past it. And because it's a place that's so desolate, if you pulled up there, nobody'd see what you're doing up there. I think it's a good location. Could it be a good location for a child sex predator who kidnapped her and murdered her? Again, it could be. And if that's true, we have the same problem we have with, with the, um, the reservoir. Let's say they're digging up, they're gonna put some houses up there or put up or whatever they're putting up there, um, something doing more windmills, and they find a body of a small child. If that body of the small child is just laying there, 
they're probably not going to prove very much about who left the body there, who who buried her body there. What are they going? What are they going to find? Um, uh, really, they're not going to find much of anything. Uh, so <laughs> there's a problem. Um, people might think there could be DNA from a sex predator. Maybe, but that's pushing it. It's been that many years. And there's, you know, this is a location that, even though it's a very dry location, there's, you know, there's bugs and there's there's rain and there's all kinds of things. Now, what if she were in a bag? We go back to the bag thing. If she's found in a sports bag from from the uh, from the vacation flat, the one that people claim is missing, that could lend to the theory that the McCanns were involved. If she's found in a in a bag, a completely different kind of thing. If there's other objects buried with her that come from somebody else's home and it can be proven it came, came from somebody else's home, then the sex predator thing could stand. So it all depends. And so while, you know, I, I think, you know, it's going to be very hard for this case ever to be closed. Uh, I, my concern is that they are looking for more and more things just to just say Christian Bruckner did it. And one day they'll just say it's, it, we believe it's him and they'll just close down the case. Um, uh not not with a conviction but with just a an administratively closed case we know who did it but we can't take it to court uh and that's that i'm surprised it hasn't happened already quite frankly um or they can get him to confess they can get him on enough other things i say look if you confess to madeline mccann's case well even if they can't get him on the other things that maybe some kind of threat maybe some kind of offer hey, just confess to the madeline mccann case and we'll lessen something you know we'll give you a better better prison cell, <laughs> whatever. My concern is that they just will get somebody to confess to, to be able to say, hey, you know, we, we've done it. We've, we've accomplished this. Um, but for the people who believe that the McCanns are involved and think they should be, it, one day will be in court, that's extremely unlikely. Barring an actual confession from the McCanns or the finding of Madeline's body in a place that they can even link to the McCann's. Chances are that won't happen. So some cases go unsolved forever. This is just a fact. Some people get away with crime. This is also a fact. Whether it be the McCann's or somebody else, they get away with it. That's that's what happens. What is a shame is that millions and millions and millions of dollars have been spent on one case when there's so many children out there whose cases are being ignored and money is not being put into their cases. And I don't know how many cases of missing children and murdered children could have been solved if that so much money hadn't been spent on Madeline McCann. And the McCann's are, and the McCann's had even a, that huge fund of theirs and that has done nothing. And they've never given that money to other children as far as I know. So I'm kind of appalled about the use of money for just one child when there's so many other children and families who need help. That bothers me. And I have a, I'll link my book below, which is 10 murdered and missing children's cases that have nothing to do with Madeline McCann. And some people who've read it go, but every one of these, every one of these chapters has something to do with Madeline McCann. I'm like, yeah, that's a joke. Because every time another case tries to get some kind of uh, publicity or money, they don't, but Madeline McCann does. And so it's, it's a, a bit of a tongue in cheek book, but it does, I do point out the real issues as, as they really are. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the, this new great event <laughs> happening in Portugal. I'm sure it'll just blow over in a few days, but maybe I'll be surprised. Haven't been in all these years, but maybe I'll be surprised. And so if you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Check my playlist for other cases. And uh, well, let's let let's see what happens in the, in the next few days. Hmm.